Hi, I'm Ali and a warm welcome to the Ceramic Repair Studio. So in today's video, I thought I would share with you how I'm going to actually glue back into position this uh, pottery pot. And it's not actually completely broken, but it's very, very loose and about to break. So we're going to fix this back together. And I've noticed also that it has quite a large chip. So I thought I'd also fill the chip in as well. But before I do, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for more hints and tips. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Right, let's get going. Right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to glue where, as you can see, it's got a very big crack. Now, because this is not, this is a pottery base and not porcelain, I'm just going to use a glue which is just the ordinary Araldite slow release glue. Now I've got a bottle top here, always useful to collect bottle tops for painting and mixing glue. And also I have a cocktail stick to mix the glue and I've got some, this is a powder, titanium dioxide powder. You don't really need it, but if you have a product, um, an item where you don't want the glue to go yellow, it does help it to sort of keep to a white colour. So first of all, with the Araldite, we're just going to just add a little bit. So I would place just about a few bits like that. I'd always remember to put the lid back on straight away. And then we'll just add another big dollop, even quantities. There we go. And I like to mix it first before I apply the titanium. So we'll just start to mix. And you'll know when it's fully mixed because the glue will end up being, will end up sort of going a cloudy colour. So as you can see there, so once it's a cloudy colour, this is the part where I am going to add just a touch of titanium powder. Now, if you put too much powder in, it does weaken the glue. So you would only need almost just a tiny bit like so. And lid back on. Right, so we just give that a good mix. Mix here. And as you can see, it's going to a nice whiter colour. Now, I also have some scotch tape here. So once we've applied the glue, we can really hold it tight. I prefer scotch tape to say um, an ordinary tape because it doesn't leave such a sticky residue at the end. I also have a glass of water. So once we've mixed our mixture up here, I'm just going to find where our crack is. And it's quite a deep crack actually. It goes all the way down and along and just starting here as well. So we're going to take our glue and just apply it as much as possible into the crack and you want to work along really trying to get it to seep in now if you do live in a hot country you have the bonus or if it's a very warm day of the glue being slightly finer um, as it tends to sort of thin out in warmer weather so you actually get a better fit and we just work all the way, all along, really trying to get it into those crevices there. And all along there, just really kind of almost load it up. It doesn't matter if we go over because we can take it off with some kitchen paper and water afterwards. So I'm really getting that into those cracks and I'm just going to work along here as well and literally to where the starting point is. Now Araldite takes around 24 hours to actually um, to harden Although, to be honest, the longer you leave it, the better. So I will probably leave it for a good 48 hours for it to completely set. And then I'm just going up to as much as possible to where I think 
the line starts. So once we've done that, I'm going to just take some kitchen roll with some of the water and we're just going to not soak it, but just very, very lightly on a very damp kitchen roll, just take off any surplus glue. Now, before we actually tape, we're also going to do the inside as well. So we're gluing literally from two angles. Now, because this is pottery, you can't really use the 2020, which is a special glue for for porcelain, um, which is very fine. But obviously the crack here is quite large, so we really can get in with the ordinary slow release araldite which to be honest is more readily available and, and it's a lot cheaper as well. So now we're just going another dollop of glue on the inside. And as you can see, we just move that in. So we're attacking it literally from both ways. We really try to get that in. And again, all the way in there. I think this has had, you can see it's quite black, so it's had something else in there as well, which try to protect it. And we just want to work, as I say, all the way along those lines. And a little bit more. So be quite liberal with the glue as well, if you can see in there. and a little bit more just in that part there so you try to get right in and last bit there right so once again once we've done that try to really get into those crevices there if you see any gaps just fill it in with the glue and then as we did on the outside just a damp cloth and just wipe any surplus glue off first. I just want to wipe it all on the inside. And then you want to make sure it's nice and dry as well. So once that's done and it's nice and dry, we're going to take our scotch tape here and you just want to take a little bit That's a fairly large piece and we're going to actually just take one side and just fl just flop it over and by doing this when it comes to taking off the cell at the tape it's quite easy to find an edge so I'm going to start with the outside and I'm going to start on the biggest uh, break and I'm just going to push it together you may see some more surplus glue come out that's fine you want to hold it down on one end Oops, hold it down on one end and then really pull so you get a really good tight fit. I think it must have had some paint in there at some stage as well, red fingers. Right, so now let's do another piece. So again, take a good amount and then just fold it across. And then I'm going to come down a little bit lower. Again, really press, really try to get it as tight as possible on one side and then press onto the other. And then we'll just do one more bit here and then we'll get on with the inside. So again, folded, hold, press, pull as much as possible. So I'm just going to do a couple of bits on the inside as well before we start on the extra bit which needs filling in. So again, it's a bit harder when you get to the inside. See so if you can hold down with the hand and then finger and then again pull just so we get a really good tight fit. And we'll just do one last one and place down, pull and then just give a good tight fit. And so that's then ready to just set. Now, as you can see here, amongst this bit here, we've got this bit which is missing. Now, I'm using Milliput, which I'm not sponsored by the way, but it does come in various colours. 
um, and it's just so easy to use so I tend to use them but if you have something which you would you would you know recommend please leave um, leave it in the comments down below um, I've chosen this one because it's the terracotta the turquoise blue sorry and this is kind of a bluey color so it comes in two packs and we do sort of 50 50 so we need to mix half and half so we take the first bit and it's not that big really so just wipe my fingers out I've still got a bit of paint on there that's it otherwise we're going to end up with red in there so we just take a little bit in our hands and I do like to mix this up in a ball just remember to again make sure you fully wrap it first before don't leave anything sort of exposed otherwise it does tend to dry out and so I put it into a ball because then it's easier to compare when we mix the other amount yeah. this one always tends to be a little bit softer so it's easier and more pliable so again just in a round circle and then we can compare that's roughly the same size so what you want to do now is really combine it again place that down on there now because they're two different colours it's really easy to see when they're combined because um, obviously it ends up being one colour and it takes just a few minutes to combine the milliput. Now if you don't combine them in equal quantities or if you don't combine it fully it won't set and you'll end up with sort of a softness so you'd have to really do need to take it off and start again. So really be mindful and just double check that you really do have the right quantities, the half of one pack, half of the other, so you don't end up with, um, so actually, so it doesn't end up soft and you end up with um, your product uh, which is set. So as you can see, it's starting to take shape now and it's looking a bit more marbly. It's a very good colour actually. Um, what I do when I'm mixing these, I'll just show you is when I do have any of my spare surplus I just make them into small discs so you can if you have an item and you want to compare for instance you can compare colours um, this is a brown one black um, this is a grey um, blue grey I think that one is which is quite a good colour and also the super fine white but today as I say we're using this colour I also find if I have any little surplus left over, um, you could also make them into balls and maybe use them as baking beads, um, you know, for flans and things. <laughs> so never leave anything to for waste and wastage. Now that's coming together now, and as you can see, it's literally combined. Now, because this is pottery, I'm going to add, and it's very dry, I'm just going to add a little bit of water first. You don't have to, but I prefer to. Um, obviously, if you've got porcelain or china, it's not, it's, not such a, it's not so porous. But because it's so porous, I'm just going to, with my finger, just, I've dipped it into water and just, I've just put a little bit on there. It doesn't need to be soaking wet, it doesn't need to be dripping, but just something I always find rather than it going on to something which is such a, almost like a biscuit. So now once I've done that, I'm just going to take my piece and roughly get this, the amount I need and almost get it into shape. Now you don't need glue with this, it will self, will actually uh, adhere by itself, and maybe a little bit less. And then I'm just gently going to apply and start to press in. Now you want to go over slightly because then you can actually sand. You don't want it to be, uh, you know, just onto, otherwise you're going to end up with ridges. Also, if you put too much of it on, you will end up, you know, that's fine, but you'll end up with harder work at the end when it comes to actually uh, sanding. So you want it fairly the the shape now I'm just going to find a tool here just a small little knife here so I can actually take any ex excess off so it'll make my life easier so quickly around that there we go and again just press in and just blend in 
and if you want to if you want to smooth it out you can always again add your finger into a tiny tiny bit of water you don't need much and then you can just smooth it out with your fingers now with milliput it takes around again i would say 24 hours to um, completely harden but i again i like to leave it as long as possible and i just might just take a little bit more off so i've got less work at the end of the day again a bit more yeah so i would leave this for a good 48 hours so then it's ready for sanding by that point it will also be ready for the um for this to be taken off the tape so it should be all by that point all together what i'll do is probably in the next half an hour or so i'll just keep coming back and i'll keep just readjusting the tape to make sure that I've got really good tight fit just as it's drying. So I hope you enjoyed this video today and I hope you, hope you found it useful. Please comment down below if you did. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like and share. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Okay, bye.